I'm Katie Hill. I'm running for Congress in California's 25th district, which is the seat that's currently held by the Republican Steve Knight. He is one of the biggest Trump supporters in the country. He's gone with Trump 98% of the time, and he's actually one of the most vulnerable Republicans in the country. So this seat is one of our best chances as Democrats at taking back the House next year. Have you run for public office before? I have not run for public office before, but I have worked on significant legislation uh, at the state and local levels to address homelessness and affordable housing in our communities. So I have election experience, just not as the, the person who's actually running. This is my home. We call it our little homestead. My husband and I live here with our two goats, one horse, a bunch of chickens, a couple turkeys, four rescue dogs, and a couple of cats. Um, we have two and a half acres here in Agua Dulce, which is a small town of 3,500 people in Los Angeles County, right in the middle of the district. Um, and this is the home that he, my husband grew up in, and we ended up buying it from his parents a few years ago. We love this place. We love this community. And I'm so excited to be able to represent it in Congress. So the 25th district represents the communities of the Antelope Valley, Santa Clarita Valley, and, uh, and the Simi Valley. So that actually covers... Santa Clarita is one, the third largest city in LA County, but most people don't even know it. Uh, the Antelope Valley is a little bit different. It's got Lancaster and Palmdale. There are several different rural communities like this one of Agua Dulce in between. And then Simi Valley is out in Ventura County. So it's a very diverse district. Uh, people are really working hard to make the best life that they can for themselves and their families. They are close-knit communities. They The communities really step up for each other when there's when something happens. and, and uh, it's, it's a place to raise your family and to make the best opportunities possible. Just tell me a little bit about your own kind of political philosophy. It just seems to me that, you know, Trump is a really nasty guy mm -hmm. and uh, probably the, the, the worst president we've had in my lifetime, mm -hmm. period, and certainly the most vicious when it comes to his treatment of women. Mm -hmm. And both what he says and his reputation and the things he used to brag about on Howard Stern's show and Mm -hmm. Just a, a dreadful human being. Yeah. So it's an interesting time to be running as a candidate who's a woman yes. and who's progressive. I just want to ask you a little bit about your political philosophy. You know, what, it, what motivates you? Sure. So I believe that our country is great, but our political system is broken, and that's really what launched me into this. I was the executive director of the largest homeless services organization in the state of California. We were literally helping thousands of people every single year move off the streets into permanent homes. And I realized after Donald Trump got elected and we had a Republican House and Senate that was going to enable his entire agenda, that everything that I'd been working my entire career towards was in jeopardy and we had to do something. So when I found out that my district, the place that I've spent my entire life that I love so much, uh, was one of the, the most important seats in the country for us to be able to take back the House next year, uh, and that the right kind of candidate had to be able to step up and, and to be able to win this seat in a place that's been held by a Republican for 40 out of the last 50 years. Uh, I decided that this was my moment that I could serve my country just like every single generation of my family has done uh, by serving in the military all the way back to the Revolutionary War. My political philosophy is pretty simple. It's that the government is here to serve the people and it, it, we've really gotten away from that and I think that we, you know, with how much we see the influence of special interests and big money and um, even, you know, the political, the, the, the two political parties that are just controlling so much of what uh, our, our system is doing or really in this case not doing, um, you, we're never going to be able to move forward as a country. We're never going to be able to make progress on the issues that are so important. Like ho housing affordability is one of the biggest crises that we face here in this community and across California. Uh, homelessness is a huge issue. We've also got, of course, jobs and um, affordability of college and health care and so many things that there is no excuse for us not to make progress as a country except for the stagnation that is is enabled by the fact that our system is bought off or there's party loyalty over over commitment to the people of the communities that our representatives are supposed to serve. You know, I, one thing about me is I came out of a religious right background mm -hmm. and I left the religious right. We had a lot of following right here in Southern California. You know, this was Ronald Reagan territory and I, we knew the Reagans. I got a handwritten note from him when my dad died and so forth and so on. And I got out of the movement, but one of the reasons I left was just it turned into something very indecent. It was mm -hmm. not even a question of the things that I disagreed with on women's rights and gay rights and these other things, but really just the fraudulence of it. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me now with Donald Trump, the whole party has become fraudulent. Mm -hmm. I mean, they actually have a TV preacher con artist type, mm -hmm. if you want to put mm -hmm. it that way, although he's a reality show, but you know what I'm talking right, about, right. is running our country. And, you know, just look into the camera and address that. I mean, we've got a con artist running our country.
And we need people who are real. Right, right. Uh, agree or disagree, just some, some authenticity. And yes. you know, that's one thing that I like about you. So talk about it. Sure. Be so, authentic. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, one of the most important things in in an elected official, and one of the reasons I'm running, is that I believe that we as an American people have... Uh, have lost trust in, in our elected officials. And I think that's one of the reasons that Donald Trump got elected. He is a con artist and he has played to that, that genuine belief, I think, that most people feel that our, our representatives in Washington are not really authentic in any way. They're just political talking points or they, they're bought off or they're loyal to their party and not to the people that they're supposed to be working for. So I think that if we can bring that same level of perceived authentic, authenticity that you know, one of the things we heard over and over again after the election was that, you know, I don't really agree with Donald Trump on most things. I don't really, you know, I think I'm like, eh, whatever about him, but I do feel like he tells it like it is. And I think that we need to have that same, that same credibility, that same level of saying, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and you can, you can truly believe that because I'm not taking that special interest money. Like for example, in this campaign, we're funded entirely by individuals. We're not, uh, we're not taking any corporate money whatsoever. We are. We have tons and tons of small dollar donations. We've got thousands of indi individual donors, and I believe that you know whatever tough vote I have to make, at least I can look at people and say I'm voting this way because it's what I believe, not because insurance companies you know paid me off or because of pharmaceutical companies or big oil or anything like that. This is my vote, and it's because I know in my heart that I believe I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, and presumably, unlike Donald Trump, if you say you're going to do something for people, I'll do it. he doesn't do the opposite. Right. So you know he's deconstructing the environmental right. protection. Agency. Right, right. He he says he's going to help the economy, and he's helping his billionaire cronies. Yeah. He has a tax plan to raise taxes mm -hmm. on the middle class mm -hmm. and give money to oligarch white people like him. Mm -hmm. And it's not just it's a double loss of credibility because he's a con artist, but yeah. he also is just a. I'm a sorry liar. to say, it, yeah, he's just a liar. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, I know, it's horrible. I think, I think trust is the most important thing, and you know that's how I was brought up was that you don't, you don't make promises you don't intend to keep and that your word is everything. And, you know, my family is full of public servants. That's how I've spent my entire career is working for the most vulnerable people uh, in our society, people who are homeless and are margin have been marginalized and un literally unseen for, in some cases, decades. So when I say something, I mean it. And I actually think that's something that I've, I've run into a lot in politics so far. I've been in it for a pretty short period of time. There's there, I get a lot of pressure to say, well, well, just, you know, you can just say that and then kind of, you know, we can change it a little bit for the general. And I'm like, I won't pivot. So we need our, we need our message to stay the same, no matter, no matter who I'm talking to. And I need to be able to look somebody in the eye and say, look, we're not going to agree on everything. If we, if you meet us, if you meet somebody and you agree with them on everything, chances are they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. So we have to get to a place where we can have an honest dialogue. I can explain where I'm coming from. I can listen to what you have to say, and we're going to come somewhere in the middle. And I, and I can say, Stand behind the decisions that I make as an elected because I know I've listened to my community and I know that I'm making the best decision that I feel like I can stand behind so can you tell me a little bit about what people can do for your campaign how can they follow you where do they go what do they look at sure so the best place to find us is on on our website first which is katiehillforcongress.com our website is really exciting it's my platform is really described in videos and it's um, it's I, frankly I haven't seen any other political websites that are like that we are also very active on Facebook, so that's uh, facebook.com slash Katie Hill for Congress. And on Twitter, uh, that's Katie Hill, the number four CA. And uh, we're on Instagram as well, which is also Katie Hill for Congress. Um, I think that's all the major ways. But, you know, the biggest thing is at this point, we need to get the word out. We need to make sure that everybody knows that this is a campaign that is crucial no matter where you live in the United States. If we want to take back the House next year, which is the first way that we're going to be able to put a check on Donald Trump, then we have to we have to win this seat. This is We know we have to take back the House, and if we don't take back this seat, we will not take back the House. That we're way too utilitarian in this country. You know, education is about competing with the Chinese. Um, you know, art is about the art market and Sotheby's auctioneers. You know, the economy, the economy, growth and all the rest of this, it's great. But at a certain point, people have to talk about right and wrong and morality. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I really think, you know, why I'm excited by your campaign is you actually care about the right and wrong of things. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So this is... It's funny. I have taken my husband and I have both talked a lot about ethics throughout our our time together, 
And we always talk about how we fit most within the type of ethics that is you just know if something's right or wrong and virtue ethics. And um, I think that that's something that I've carried through my life, through the kinds of things that I was, that, that's what I was raised with. And there's just a certainty of, of it's, it's wrong to leave somebody on the street if they're bleeding. And in the same way, it's wrong to let millions of people die because they don't have access to health care. They don't have the health care that they deserve. Um, it's, it's wrong that we have anybody sleeping on our streets let alone veterans or seniors or kids it's wrong when we have you know people who can't who can't even get elected let alone they can't run let alone get elected to public office if they aren't if they aren't extraordinarily wealthy in so many cases we just have so much that is that that we have allowed to continue to grow uh, that is wrong with our country and we need people who have the moral conviction to stand up to that and to do what's right